If you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. Hello and welcome to Spirit Guides. Welcome back. I'm so glad you could be here. I'm your host, Kelly Sparta. I'm a transformational shaman and spiritual coach. With me, as always, is my co-host, Joshua Radawan, a spiritual coach in his own right. So we are going to be talking today about the identity tango and whether or not you have two left feet in regards to it. And so what do we mean by the identity tango? The identity tango is is the process of personal growth, right? So when you are growing as a person, the very first thing you have to recognize is you have to I recognize that to grow, you have to change who you believe yourself to be. This is what we, we are talking about with the identity tango. And why do I call it a tango? Because it's often two steps forward and one step back, right? <laughs> So, because we're like, I'm, I'm up here. Am I really up here? I'm up here. Am I really up here? I'm up here. Am I really up here? I don't know. Right. It's a lot of that. And so, you know, this is why it's really a dance. And, you know, many people feel like they have two dead feet. In fact, Josh said that to me when, when I told him the title of this, I was like, Oh, the identity tango. And he's like, Oh, I've got two left feet. <laughs> And I was like, that's fantastic. So we added it to the title because, you know, the more snark, the better. And so uh, today we're going to talk about why is personal growth important? What are your personal growth goals and how how are those designed and can it be negative and what can spark your personal growth and basically just sort of how to on the personal growth scene. So let's start with the first one, which is why is personal growth important? So Josh, I know you've been doing a lot of personal growth work recently, (laughs) a lot of identity up leveling. You want to talk about that for a minute? So to, to be able to get to the place I desired in life, I had to be willing to let go of a lot of limiting belief structures. So that's why I had said two left feet, because it, it is like a tango. Like I would go backwards and then forward and then backwards and then forward. So you know, when we're stepping into a, a new belief system, a lot of what we have always clung to kind of holds us tight in, into this the space. So that you know, I look at it as like an egoic stance, like this limiting belief structure. The ego doesn't really want a deep level of change, so you know, it kind of just keeps nagging at you a little bit. So, personal growth work and doing your work is the only way to get through that and to really get rid of these limiting belief structures within ourselves. And, you know, I've worked with Kelly for three years, so it's been quite a dance is all I have to say about that. (laughs) Well, I am the spiritual express train, so. (laughs) Yes, she is. (laughs) So, yeah, this is the, the, so personal growth is important because if you don't grow, you will always be exactly where you are. Because where you are is a function of your belief structures and your actions. And if you don't grow as a person, you will not change your belief structures and you will not change your actions. And between those two things, you will be exactly where you are. The, the surroundings may be different, but the exact same circumstances will be there. No matter where you go, there you are. Thank you, Bucker Ribanzai. So there's a, a obscure movie reference for those of you who don't know. Check out Bucker Ribanzai Adventures in the Eighth Dimension. It's a really bad, really bad B movie. <laughs> But yes, no matter where you go, there you are, and you will bring your crap with you. And that is the nature of the beast. And so this is why we grow. <clears throat> so the, uh, you know, personal growth goals is another interesting one, because, you know, people ask this question a lot. I know, because I went out and looked on the internet, and it said, this is one of the most asked questions. <laughs> and so, you know, what are what are personal growth goals? Well, okay, so I'm going to tell you this. The the foundational goal in personal growth work is how do I uh, identify my stories and unwind them? Okay. My limiting beliefs, my stories, my, my things that, that hold me in place, right? What are the things that are, are maintaining this belief structure and therefore this reality, right? Because your reality is a rea- is a reflection 
of your belief structure. And so the foundational goals are, how do I change my belief structure? And what do I want to change it to, to support a different reality, right? And so, you know, that's an important thing, but it's not so much a goal. And this is the thing that I, I talk to my students about all the time, is that goals are in the future. Any work you do on yourself is in the present. And so I don't want you to set a goal for your personal growth. I want you to set a consciousness for your personal growth. I want you to be in a space where you are aware and conscious and present to the things that are creating your reality. And so, you know, this is, this is so important because if you're not, then you are going to miss out on the opportunity to change. Okay. And so rather than setting a future goal of, I want to be, you know, successful, or I want to be married, or I want to be, you know, whatever, whatever you want to do, right? Um, I would instead say, I am a person who is successful. I am married. And what does that look like? How do how do I behave in that scenario? Right? I am whatever it is that I want to be. And not in a so this is this often gets misconstrued in law of attraction work. Abraham says, you know, Abraham Hicks says, be the be the where you want to be, just be there. And people think it's a fake it till you make it thing. And they think it's a live in delusional positivity thing, which are not good, right? This instead is a be present to who you would be in that scenario, right? And so, you know, as you are making the shift into the new way of, of being, you adopt the behaviors and the beliefs and the energetic of the person who has the things or is the person that you are choosing to become. Okay, so <clears throat> let's let's take an example of this. If you are, and I did some of this with Catherine, so I'm going to try and choose some some different uh, some different examples. So I'm going to talk to Josh right now because Josh is stepping into a deeper form of his business and, and so on. So Josh, I know you're doing some identity shift right now. So you want to talk about how that is going for you personally, and the story about, you know, how you're changing your identity in that regard? So uh, absolutely. One thing I've done is start my own company you know, after years and years of working paycheck to paycheck. Um, you know, and, and not being filled within my soul, I decided one day I, I showed up to work and I was like, I'm never going to go back here. And so it was a huge decision with zero plan. So to, to <laughs> shift, so, in the case. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so to, to shift into the identity of, of being a businessman, to understand marketing, to, you know, understand books and taxes and, and everything that goes with it while trying to do something that I'm passionate about to create, you know, a revenue stream that, you know, can maintain what I have built is, you know, so it was a huge identity shift because I, I you know, I got so wrapped up into that pattern that you have to go to work every day in order to, to do that. So to shift into the identity that I can do something that I love to, to, to create the, my dream life, it was a lot because there was a lot of limiting beliefs that were not even on my own exclusively, but, you know, down the family ancestral line, this has been a pattern. So, Yeah. Well, and, and that's another factor, right? Is, is dealing with the ancestral line stuff. And by the way, it is not your job to heal your ancestors. Let me just say this right now. There's a lot of crap going around about people saying, oh, I have to heal, heal my ancestors. No, you have to give your ancestors back their own crap so that they can do their healing work. It is disempowering to your entire familial line to try to heal your ancestors. And it's impossible. You can't heal anybody else. They heal themselves. That is the nature of the beast and trying to heal your ancestors is just a whole lot of way of spinning your wheels and getting nowhere on your own work. 
It is a resistance to doing your own work. And all the people who are out there saying, oh, go heal your ancestors. No, 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 no. Stop it. Stop it. Okay. <clears throat> you, you are doing your own work and you're handing their stuff back to them. So we take on things from our parents and our ancestral line out of love for them because we want to make them feel better. And because we're good little empaths who are like, you're miserable. I need you to not to be miserable because you're making me miserable because I feel everything you feel. And so I'm going to try and fix everything that you have going wrong with you because I need to stop feeling like this. Which, of course, doesn't work because it's a manipulation and it's not yours. And therefore, you're just holding on to crap that's not yours. And this goes down the family line for freaking ever, right? So just hand it back. Give it back. Just hand it up your ancestral line and it will get to where it needs to go, okay? Skip over whoever's in line above you who's still alive. If they're not in, if they're not capable of being part of the, the ritual, just skip over them and hand it to the person before them who's already crossed over and just keep going back the line <clears throat> and it will get to where it needs to go. And if it's somebody who's still alive that you're holding just their stuff, well, hand it back to them energetically. Not in person, because they probably won't receive it, but just energetically hand it back to them. Just have a little ritual, have a picture of them, hand it back, okay? Put them above you because they are above you in the family hierarchy, right? Because they are your parent. But, you know, put, put a picture of them up above your head and say, I took this on out of love, I'm giving it back, and hand it back, okay? But that's it. That's all you do to heal your ancestors. And I know we just talked about something completely not on this topic, but... <laughs> But it, but it kind of is, right? It kind of is. So yeah, so let's talk about how personal growth might be negative, because that's another question that people ask. And yeah, there are some negative aspects that can come about from personal growth, one of which is you may discover that the people you were friends with before you don't want to be friends with anymore, because you have outgrown them. And that is sad. But it is often true. Because when you change, there's cognitive dissonance that gets set up. When you change, you by definition will change the nature of your relationship because you are no longer the same connecting point that you were before. And that change in the nature of the relationship may or may not be received well by the other person. And when you change, there's a cognitive dissonance set up with them that is oh, our relationship is changing. I, You're changing. You're not the person you were to me before. I, I'm used to you being that person. I like you being that person. I want you to be that person and they'll try and drag you back. This is why it's so important to make friends who are doing this work too, because they will hold the space of, no, you deserve to be better. You know, you deserve to feel happier. You deserve to have more. You deserve to to be, be loved and to not be taken advantage of, and to be less stressed and more peaceful, and all the things that personal growth can bring for you. You deserve these things, and you should have them. And, you know, while your friends are looking at you going, you're changing, Why, what, what's wrong with you? You're not the person, that you, this isn't who you are. And of course, it's not who you are, because you're changing who you are. That's a conscious choice on your part. And so they're stuck in a place where they either have to change with you in order to keep up, or they have to drag you back to keep the relationship or the relationship has to stop. And, you know, yeah, that can be a problematic situation. And so you just need to wrap your head around the fact that not everybody's going to come with you. And that is just the nature of how this work works. So that's, and uh, so, that, that's you know, a, that's funny because yeah, go ahead. You know, when, when I, you did that energy review on me, I, I believe last June, you know, you were looking at the friends piece and you're like, all I see is you and scorched earth. I was like, yep, that is accurate because, <laughs> you know, I, I, I finally had gotten past that place of I have to hold on to this. And it was me that was doing the holding, not saying that some of the people didn't want to keep latching because there's, you know, that that piece there, too. But, you know, one of the things that came in meditation shortly after that is if you want something different, you have to do something different than you've ever done. And with with that with that piece came, you know, peace. <laughs> so. It's an interesting process. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and, you know, sometimes letting go is a very difficult process, but once you do it, you're like, Oh, I mean, I remember, I remember agonizing for years over getting my divorce. You know, you want to talk about letting go, right? 
years I agonized over the thought of it. I spent three years trying to decide whether or not to get a divorce. And then when I finally pulled the trigger on it, I was like, oh my God, I'm so grateful for this. This was such a good idea. Ah, you know, right. There was just so much. Yeah. The, the other piece of that is, you know, when you can separate from everything, you can also see what is your stuff and what is other people's stuff. So, you know, that was, that was a right. huge piece for me when I was able to get the space, I could actually see what personal growth I needed to work on because, you know, there was nobody to blame anymore. <laughs> it was like, Oh, this is all inside right. me now and there's nobody else. So now let's, let's take that look. Yeah. Well, and this is why so many people do so well at retreats is because it takes them out of their current environment and allows them to just be in a space where nobody has expectations of who they are. Right. They just, they just are, they get to be who they are in that moment and then they have the freedom when they're unfettered by their roles and their, you know, their relationships to make changes. That's why retreats can be so powerful for people is because it is literally you, just you and not having to worry about anything else. And so that's, you know, that's an, it's a microcosm of the larger personal growth uh, process, right? So let's, let's just quickly talk about what can spark personal growth. And so big life changes can spark personal growth, right? So divorce, ma marriage, birth of a baby, kids leaving the house, the job loss, job change, job promotion, you know, it doesn't all have to be negative stuff. I mean, buying a house will spark personal growth because you've never owned a house before. And you're like, Oh, crap, now I'm a homeowner. What does that mean? Okay, that's a new identity that you're taking on. And I have to learn how to maintain this house. And what do I do when things break? Because I've never had to do that before as a renter, you know, that sort of thing. So even positive changes can spark personal growth. And then, you know, cultural changes can also do it. I mean, I watched in 2016, when Trump won the election, I watched people drive into personal growth at a level I've never seen in the entire almost 50 years I've been doing this work. And it's because the shock of the outcome of the election for all the Democrats was enough that it galvanized people. They can't control the outside so they went and did their inner work. And so they came flooding in to the market at that time. They came flooding into the spiritual world. And it happened again in 2020 with the, with COVID and the, and potentially, you know, the, the Republicans coming in. I, I, you know, I didn't identify that specifically, but COVID and, and the election shift and, and, you know, the whole thing. But outside circumstances can actually trigger personal growth because we were all forced into a hermitage in 2020. We were forced to be alone with ourselves and we some of us were not so great at it, right? And so when you can't be alone with yourself, well, maybe you should do some work on yourself. And that's what a lot of people came to, which I, I give them great credit for, right? Because we don't know we can't be alone with ourselves until we're forced to be alone with ourselves, right? Because those of us who are bad at it will go out and find a lot of things to do. But when you don't have that option and you're faced with it and you have the courage to look it in the face instead of continuing to do things to go la, 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 you know, sticking my fingers in my ears and going, ah, that, that takes courage, right? And so I give them great credit for that. So let's, let's talk about how to do personal growth as our final topic of the, the podcast here today. How to is an identity shift. And we've talked about this some, but, you know, changing your beliefs. <laughs> so here's the thing about a belief is that you will reinforce that belief as often as humanly possible. And so you have to question it on a regular basis. But on top of that, you also need to develop. So there's, let me just say that there are, there are two different pieces to this, right? You have, well, three different pieces. There is a, you can build a skill set, and that is, in fact, considered personal growth, okay? Building a skill set of things like how do I deal with my anger? How do I be, how do I communicate more effectively? How do I take care of myself better? You know, these are these are skill sets that you build, right? And they are helpful 
in terms of changing the way that you behave and therefore changing the responses that you get from others. And those skill sets can be fairly easily built. They just are, they require self-discipline because it's it's a habit that you you have to consciously cultivate until it becomes a habit, right? Which usually means six to eight weeks of conscious cultivation before something becomes a habit. Now, for things like self-care, that one's a little harder. <laughs> you know, we can say, oh, I'm going to go out to eat or I'm going to get a massage once a week or whatever it is that you're going to do, right? But that's not really the self-care that I'm talking about. That is sticking a sucker in the mouth of the child, the inner child who is overdone and exhausted and saying, please stop crying, right? <laughs> that is not what I'm talking about when I say self-care. Self-care is about becoming conscious of what you need in the moment you need it and then fulfilling your needs. And that is a much more complicated process. But, um, but it can be done if but it's not going to happen in six to eight weeks. I'm just setting your expectations for up right late, right? You, you can do it. It's just going to take longer than six to eight weeks to make that go. And the so you can develop the habits, right? You can do that through conscious uh, creation of that new habit structure. That's a skill set. The next thing is identity work, which is what the identity tango is that we've been talking about. Identity work will change your belief in who you are. So skill set building, things like how do I manage my anger, is what you do after you've already been triggered, right? It's like, okay, I'm triggered. Let me learn how to manage this, right? But identity work, if you do it in the right way, will prevent you from being triggered in the first place. And so the skill set isn't necessary because the trigger never happens. And that is, there's a lot of perspective shift in that. There's a lot of identity shift in that. And there's a lot of, of really seeing things very differently, okay? And so I really like to work on the identity shift side because I would rather not be triggered than learn how to manage my trigger. <laughs> and so that's the path that I tend to walk people down. You have something, I say, Josh? I could say from personal experience with, uh, you know, cognitive behavioral therapies, you know, like once I, you know, I, I did a lot of these and they were great for situational type deals, but when it came to doing the deep inner work and the identity shifting, now these, these situations don't even appear in my life. I no longer manifest the same situations because I can see the patterns, not only in myself, but in the world around me. So I'm like, okay, is that an energetic that I want to buy into? Absolutely not. So I'm just going to go over here. So I don't even have to use those CBT skills anymore because my, my, my identity shifted to a place where these, these scenarios don't play out anymore. Yeah. And that's what I'm talking about with identity shift, right? And then the third one is energetic shift. And, you know, a lot of us don't recognize how energy impacts our lives until it's right in our face. And so, like, we've got a, there's a program on the website called Boundaries for Empaths. It is a free program. If you go to kellysparta.com and you click on the blog page on the right hand column there is a click link for the boundaries for empaths class it is a free class and i recommend that everyone who is an empath download it and share it with their friends because this thing is revolutionary and it will change the way that you experience your life and as empaths that is a crucial skill that needs to be acquired in order for us to really have a, a significant transition in our lives. And I give this away for free because one, it was not my idea in the first place. Somebody gave it to me. I wish I could remember their name. I met them at a conference somewhere and I never got their contact information, but it was gifted to me and therefore I gift it to others. And so this program is, it, it will teach you how to change the way you hold your energy field so that you don't end up being impacted by other people's strong emotions. So that you, and, and it's got a whole bunch of discussion about how we do relationships and, you know, what, what the impact is of doing this on others and all of the pieces and parts. I mean, there's a, there's a lot in this program. So I highly recommend that you go get a copy of that. And, uh, that will help you change energetically so that you can grow and feel more solid as a person. And this is going to completely change the way you experience things because 
you know, you are an energetic being, whether you're conscious of it or not. And so, okay. I think that's it for this week. So we will talk to you next time. Remember that your attention is what you attract. Your intention is what you create. So choose wisely, young Jedis. We'll talk to you next time. So that's it for today's episode of Spirit Guides Podcast. Head on over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. Every week, one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on iTunes will be entered into a drawing for a $10,000 value grand prize and a private reading with Kelly Sparta herself. Be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode. Show of